Welcome to Flictronics. This is video number two of the CTS course. Today, we will chat about the fundamental differences between analog and digital signals. Understanding these distinctions is key to working with AV systems as the industry has shifted significantly from analog to digital technology. Here is what we'll cover in this video. AV system goals, analog and digital waveforms, digital signal basics, noise and signal transmission, analog and digital signal consideration. We'll start first by explaining what is an AV system. To put it simply, an AV system helps people communicate an idea effectively. Think concert halls, conferencing, digital signage, education, and much more. Whether it's a touch screen display, a musical, or a wedding video, it's still part of AV. The technology we use today helps people relate and understand one another. How the audiovisual industry is defined on where you stand and your expertise. In the technology we use, it's really everywhere. From surgeons in operating rooms, students and teachers in classrooms, courts and boardrooms. An AV system can be defined as two or more pieces of gear to meet a communications need. Such a system can be wired or wireless. It can be either passive or active, i.e. powered. Our industry has many verticals. Think universities, government, military, business and healthcare, retail, funeral homes, house of warships, esports and sports arenas. Remember, remember that the ultimate goal of an AV system is to meet a communications need. What matters is the task and the system objective. This could be to train people on AV or on sales or to engage an entire concert or to facilitate and enforce policy globally, or maybe engage and educate visitors to an exhibition, or maybe monitor aircraft locations. The AV industry is transitioning from analog transmission, recording, and processing to predominantly digital system. This shift is crucial because you will encounter both analog and digital systems in your work and sometimes even a combination of the two. A deep understanding of both is essential for any AV professional. To understand the difference between analog and digital signal, we'll start with a simple analogy. Imagine a dimmer light switch. It provides a continuous range of brightness settings from completely off to fully on. The level of brightness changes smoothly and continuously. This represents analog data, which is also continuous. Analog signals are used to represent a range of physical quantities, such as sound pressure or light intensity, and are transmitted as continuous waveforms. Now picture a ceiling fan with set speed levels, off, low, medium, and high. You cannot choose a setting between low and medium, for example. In digital systems, information is represented as discrete values or steps, often expressed in binary as a series of ones being on and zeros being off. To visualize the difference, remember that an analog waveform flows smoothly with continuous variation in amplitude over time. A digital waveform, on the other hand, consists of distinct steps or values with voltage toggling rapidly between high on and low states off. As I've mentioned, the AV industry has made the dramatic shift towards digital systems. 
to fully understand how digital signals work, let's dive into a few key concepts. Many inputs in an AV system, like sound pressure from a microphone or light captured by a camera, begin as analog signal. To work with them in the digital domain or in digital systems, we must convert them into digital formats. This process is known as analog to digital conversion. The initial step in this conversion is sampling. Sampling means taking periodic snapshots of the analog signal at regular intervals. This process is essentially for accurately representing the original waveform in a digital form. How often you take samples or screenshots or snapshots is called the sampling rate. This is measured in samples per second or hertz. And for accurate digital representation, the sampling rate must meet or exceed twice the frequency of the highest signal you wish to capture. This principle has been defined by the Nyquist-Shannon theorem. Let's take an example to bring this point home. An example would be your hearing. To capture the full range of human hearing, which spans from 20 Hz to 20K, you need a sampling rate higher than 40. And most legacy discs used to use a sample rate of 44.1, meaning they capture 44,000 and 100 samples per second for each audio channel. Another concept that is in addition to the sampling rate is the bit depth. The bit depth determines the precision of the digital signal. Bit depth refers to the number of discrete levels available to represent the sample signal's amplitude. So, for example, one bit allows for two possible values, on or off. 16 bits offer 65,536 levels, 2 to the power of 16. That provides much greater accuracy in representing signal amplitude. Higher bit depth allows for more detailed and accurate digital representations, which is especially important for audio and video applications. Another point of confusion with the bit depth is the bit rate. The bit rate is the amount of data transmitted per second in a digital signal. It's calculated by multiplying the sample rate by the bit depth. A higher bit rate usually means better quality as more data is being transmitted down the pipe. For example, a standard audio stream has a bit rate of about 1.411 megabits per second. It's calculated by multiplying the sample rate, which is 44.1K, by the bit depth, which is 16 bits, and the number of channels, two channels in this case. Bit rate is the number of bits used to represent one second of audio. The bit rate operates in a similar manner to the sample rate. But remember that it measures bits instead of samples. Bit rates measure the bandwidth of data transmission equipment and is expressed in kilobits per second. A kilobit is a thousand bit per second. Next, we're going to talk about signal compression. Compression reduces the size of digital signals or files. It makes them easier to store and transmit. There are two types of compression, and this is a high-level explanation. Lossless compression and lossy compression. When we say lossless compression, it means that the original data is preserved exactly. Examples of this include ZIP and FLAC. You probably have used ZIP. It's a standard archive file format. A ZIP file can contain one or more files or directories that may have been compressed. There are a number of underlying compression algorithms, though deflate is the most common. And when we talk about lossless compression, it's important to understand that this class of compression allows the original data to be perfectly reconstructed from the compressed data with no loss of information. Lossless compression is possible because most real-world data has some sort of statistical redundancy. On the other hand, lossy compression 
permits reconstruction only of an approximation of the original data. Think MP3, for example. Compression is particularly useful for high bitrate formats like high definition video. If we did not have compression, high definition video would otherwise require enormous storage space. For example, uncompressed high definition videos requires 11 gigabytes of storage per minute, but with lossy compression, H.264, for example, this can be reduced to just 5 meg. The key to efficient compression is using codecs, compression and decompression software, to encode and decode data with minimal loss of quality. As codecs improve, compression ratios continues to increase, delivering high quality results with smaller file sizes. One of the main challenges with analog signals is their vulnerability to noise. As an analog signal travels over long distances, it can degrade due to interference and distortion. Imagine amplifying an audio signal repeatedly. Each time you amplify the signal, you also amplify the noise, leading to a poor quality signal. On the other hand, digital signals are more resilient to noise. When noise is introduced, the signal is still either a 1 or a 0. Remember, it's discrete representations of an analog signal. Digital processing can easily detect and correct errors, ensuring that the signal remains clean and clear, even over a long distance. Both analog and digital signals have their strengths and weaknesses. Analog signals are more susceptible to noise, and each generation of copying introduces more degradation. On the other hand, digital signals can be copied or reproduced without loss of quality as long as the medium is intact. This durability is one of the reasons digital tech is preferred in modern AV systems. The ability to replicate and transmit digital signal without degradation makes it ideal for tasks like video editing, streaming, broadcast, and digital storage. Here is what we covered in this video. We covered what an AV system is, what are the goals of it. We talked about analog and digital waveforms and digital signal basics. We also talked about noise and signal transmission, as well as analog and digital signal considerations. Here are a couple of quizzes to test your understanding. Quiz number one. In a digital system, the high state is represented by, while the low state is represented by. Pause the video now to think about your answer. And the answer is A. In a digital system, the high state is represented by 1, while the low state is represented by 0. Quiz number 2. The term bit depth describes the number of used to define each sample in a digital signal. Pause the video now to think about your answer. And the answer is states. The term bit depth describes the number of states used to define each sample in a digital signal. So this concludes this section on analog and digital signals. Understanding these concepts will provide a solid foundation for working with both analog and digital systems in your AV career. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.